What's going on, my homies? Jolt here from the Token Minorities, and I am back with the Week 3 Team Builder of GBA Season 9. Now, we're trying to bounce back here from a tough week last week against Randy. Going to go ahead and give you a spoiler, so if you haven't seen that video already, if you haven't seen that battle, please pause this and go back and take a look at that match before you watch this Team Builder, because I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, okay, so you've been warned. Now, last week's game was kind of heartbreaking, honestly. Uh, it's one of those games where, you know, you, you prepare a team that should be able to win the game, but then your Pokemon just can't, like, hit their moves. I missed, like, three pretty important moves, in my opinion, in that game, and that really hurt me in, uh, in terms of trying to pull out a win, and we didn't end up losing that game. So that's pretty unfortunate. We're really looking to bounce back here in this week against my opponent, which is Num Nexus, the coach of the Pittsburgh Pichu. So make sure to go check him out, uh, as always, that he will be linked down in the description below. Really cool guy. Uh, really energetic commentary as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already very familiar with Nexus, but just in case you are not, uh, make sure to go give him a look. I'm sure you will enjoy his content as well. But with that said, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a look at uh, Nexus's draft for this season of the GBA. He is rocking a very terrifying team with a core that a lot of you guys uh, might be pretty familiar with if you watched me here last season of the GBA. He is rocking the Zygarde Complete Massive Threat. Then he has the Celesteela Mega Venusaur. You saw a little bit of that last season of the GBA. I feel pretty comfortable in preparing it against that after uh, having used it for several several weeks last season. Then he also has the Primarina Rotom Heat, Uxie, Buzzwool, Zoroark, Z Mimikyu, Gorbis, and Porygon Z. Uh, Z, -move, uh, Z Move captains then are going to be the Mimikyu and the Celesteela. So he has a really Really threatening team, uh, really disgusting defensive backbone. Mega Venusaur Celesteela, as I well know, as you guys well know, is just so difficult to break through. It's like a double Leech Seed core with really good offensive options on both of those Pokemon as well. Uh, I do say really good kind of tend up tentatively for Mega Venusaur, uh, but it still has a high base special attack stat with decent coverage options, making it at least a threat to switch into. Celesteela obviously has the autonomized option as well, which kind of makes it that scary dual threat uh, as being either a really fat, annoying, Leech Seeding, protecting tank, <laughs> or being some kind of scary setup sweeper with Autotomize. So Celesteela, Mega Venusaur both can really go both ways. Zygarde Complete is Zygarde Complete. It is absolutely incredible. It's so fat and it's still just as strong as your regular Zygarde 50. It's only based 100 attack which doesn't seem like that much on paper but it still has access to Thousand Arrows, Dragon Dance, and Coil. That combination is just terrifying okay my team only has one thousand arrows resist and that's a breloom that's not exactly a zygarde counter it did kind of work against joey last season in the gba uh, admittedly but i don't really expect breloom to always be able to counter zygarde's uh, especially one that's as fat as a zygarde complete so that's just something i'm gonna have to you know be really careful about whenever i'm building my team for this matchup but just a couple things i wanted to point out here just looking at his draft compared to mine some of the the key features, I guess, that I'm going to try to exploit from uh, in his draft. So his draft only has uh, it kind of poor hazard removal and hazard setters. He only has one of each, which is really surprising. Maybe he just doesn't really believe in the hazards game, and if that's fine, if that's the case, you know, more power to him, that's fine. Uh, but that's something that I think could potentially hinder this draft throughout the season. The only hazard setter on his team is the Uxi. The only remover is the Rotom Heat, and Rotom Heat's really not the most reliable remover either. Uh, just in general. It's actually not a bad remover against my team, which kind of sucks, but uh, even so, it's not really the most reliable in general, so people could easily hazard stack against this draft and give it a hard time, which is really bad, honestly, for a draft that's so defensive focused, or at least it feels like it's defensive focused. If you ask him, it's probably more like a, a bulky balanced approach, which is totally fine. I can definitely see that as well, but regardless, the point stands that if you're going to be kind of weak to hazards, and you're trying to run like a fatter team, it's not going to be quite as effective. So that's something I'm definitely going to try to try to exploit with my team build if I can. Spikes might be a little bit hard to to get on the team for this week just because he does have pretty solid answers to Scolipede in my opinion. So uh, bringing the spikes might be kind of tough, but I can definitely try to get up Stealth Rock here in this game uh, for sure as I think that'll be really helpful against this team. But 
even so he only has one hazard setter which is nice very nice considering i'm not the biggest fan of bringing defog unless i absolutely have to and uh, his hazard setter is a Yuxi, which in my opinion doesn't actually match up too well against my team so uh, maybe he won't even bring it but regardless i can make sure to bring a bunch of mons that can punish it if he does try to bring it for the stealth rock so the hazards department is definitely something i'm going to try to exploit here in this matchup for sure um I guess the other thing that I wanted to point out too, just kind of looking at the the team preview or the the uh, draft preview from uh, from Nexus's team, is he is super reliant, I think, on the Zygarde, Mega Venusaur, Celestia to have switch ins, really, just period, on his team. I think he's going to bring all three of those Pokemon almost every single week. Uh, I know there's some matchups where Mega Venusaur really doesn't want to come, and I could see him not bringing it. Maybe bringing like a like a Primarina, for example, in, in the place of Mega Venusaur for like his, his defensive backbone. I could see that, you know, being something he tries to do throughout the season. Uh, I don't really think that's the case in this game, though. I think in this specific game, he's pretty much forced to bring all three of Zygarde Complete, uh, Celesteela, and Mega Venusaur. Mega Venusaur is kind of needed for my Manaphy and my Breloom. Uh, Celesteela is kind of needed for Scolipede, as well as just generally being really fat and annoying against my team. And Zygarde Complete the Zygarde complete. Why wouldn't you bring your Zygarde complete? Uh, so anyways, those three mods I think are really guaranteed to come and I think they're all going to be really bulky sets as well. So basically the, the idea that I'm going to try to execute with my team then is to just have a variety of mods that can take advantage of those three Pokemon in some way. So in some way giving me uh, positive turns basically every single time any of those Pokemon are in against uh, my team so uh, that's that's pretty much what I'm gonna what I'm going for with my team build and I'll try to elaborate that uh, elaborate on that uh, whenever I get into the team here in just a second but the only other thing I wanted to point out Nexus loves Z Mimic you if you look at his previous two games week one and week two of this season of the GBA he's made it very clear that he loves his Mimic and he loves running Ghost Team Z on that Mimic so I, that's what I'm expecting in this matchup. I would be shocked to not see a Ghost DMZ on his Mimikyu, and yeah, so that's actually pretty good information to have, too, in the back of my head, uh, especially because his other Z Captain is Celesteel, and if that's not rocking a Z move, quite honestly, it becomes a lot easier to deal with in, uh, in many cases. I think Leftovers is death just better against my team, but uh, I don't know. There, there's just a very big, it's a very, very big threat when it does have access to the Z Crystal, and especially after it has clicked the Autotomize. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on over to the team that I'm going to try to bring this week against Nexus and the Pittsburgh Pichu. So we're going to kick this off with my Groudon. Now this Groudon is very, very important for this team. This is my dedicated response to his Zygarde Complete. This should absolutely wall Zygarde Complete, regardless of if it's a Coil variant, a Dragon Dance variant, maybe even a Rest Sleep Talk variant. This beats every single variant of Zygarde, unless he's like, I don't know, Specs Draco Meteor or something like that, which is highly unlikely against my team, okay? This, this does beat it, and it also is a massive threat against the rest of his team too. Combination Fire Punch and Precipice Blades hits almost his entire team for neutral damage or better. I believe the only exception to that is the Rotom Heat, which is going to be pressured a lot by the rest of my team. Especially by the Magearna, potentially by the Incineroar as well, which I'll show here in just a little bit, and the Mew even potentially. So uh, I think the Rotom Heat's going to be pressured a lot, and if he wants to use Rotom Heat as his response, to my Groudon, that's just going to make my Magearna a much better win con later on in the game. Uh, it also might make his team struggle more to switch into something like the Incineroar. So there's a lot of benefits to bringing this specific type of Groudon against him. Plus two Groudon absolutely obliterates pretty much everything on his team, okay? And what I really love about this set too is what Nexus has been known to do the first two weeks of the season is to kind of panic and go into his Mimikyu uh, whenever he's in a tough situation. I think this Groudon's going to put him in a really tough situation and Mimikyu's not going to be able to immediately check this thing. It's just not. It's not strong enough unless it gets up a Swords Dance or something. It's not strong enough to immediately check my Groudon, which means I can basically get rid of its uh, of its substitute. It's 
disguise. I was forgetting the name of the the ability there for a second. It basically allows me to get rid of get rid of his disguise very easily, uh, just using my Groudon after getting up a Swords Dance or something. So this is just really good. Roar is there just to make sure that I can't get set up on by anything on his team. His setup threats are probably going to be the Celesteela Zygarde uh, and or the Mimikyu, and uh, this thing is able to roar all those out pretty well as well. Plus, if I'm able to keep hazards on the field, then uh, yeah, that just compounds how strong this Pokemon is against up here in this week. Now, next up is going to be my Manaphy. This is one of my win cons in this game. I don't really consider Groudon to be a win con. Groudon is more so there to help me break through his team and prevent him from having his own offensive win conditions as Groudon is able to check pretty much all of his offense. So this is one of my offensive win conditions. I have really two or three of them here on this team. Uh, so this set, very straightforward, not a whole lot to really elaborate on. Tail Glow 3 attacks just murders his team. Really all I need to do is weaken down the Mega Venusaur a little bit to the point where it's in range of a plus 3 Psychic. And then this, this thing can just claim kills on pretty much his entire team. He has very little that actually outspeeds this naturally. That's really another big thing. I should have mentioned that earlier. A big uh, hindrance on his team is his speed tiers. He only has one Pokemon, if I recall correctly, only one Pokemon that's faster than base 100 without a Choice Scarf. And that is his Zoroark, which may even be his Choice Scarf in this matchup. So odds are he probably only has one Pokemon on his team that's going to actually outspeed my base 100s, which I have Mandavy and Mew, two of the absolute best base 100 speed tier Pokemon. Uh, so I think both of those are going to be really effective here in this matchup for sure. But yeah, Tail Glow 3 attacks, awesome win condition against his team. And uh, we'll just have to see what I can break through, what I can weaken uh, to the point where maybe this becomes a win con or maybe one of my other Pokemon could be a win con in this matchup too. So another one here that could be a win con is the Mew. Again, another base 100, really solid speed tier against his team. Combination Psychic, Ice Beam, Flamethrower covers pretty much everything uh, for neutral damage. It does cover everything for neutral damage on his team. This is especially his biggest threats, the defensive core, the, the fat core. I don't really want to call it defensive necessarily, but kind of like the fat core of Zygarde, Celesteela, Mega Venusaur, perfectly covered by this Mew, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm also rocking the Munium Z on the Mew this week, specifically because I, one, I like the damage out, but, but two, it means that it makes it's harder for Mimikyu to revenge kill me. It's harder for Mimikyu to try to set up a Swords Dance in my face, because what I can actually do is I can go for a uh, Genesis Supernova on the Mimikyu as it tries to go for a Swords Dance behind its disguise, and under Psychic Terrain, after Stealth Rock, I actually have a good chance of knocking out the Mimikyu with a Psychic on the following turn, while he's not going to be able to click Shadow Sneak even at plus two because of the Psychic terrain so uh, mainly they're just to prevent the Mimikyu from setting up uh, for free against my team and that's kind of a theme as well that you should be able to see as I go through this team nothing really gives Mimikyu a free setup he might get plus two against several members of my team behind the disguise that's kind of what Mimikyu does but I'm basically building this team to where he can never get plus four if he gets plus four he can just sweep me uh, with, with Shadow Sneak, Play Rough, etc. Mimikyu is a very good Pokemon. There's a reason why he likes it so much. It's very solid. Uh, but if I can keep it from getting plus four against my team and just spamming Shadow Sneak and Play Rough and Shadow Claw against me, then I should be fine here in this matchup, I think. Uh, but, you know, we got to play well, too, to make sure that doesn't happen. But anyways, uh, so that's the Mew. Pretty straightforward from an offensive standpoint. Just coverage. I, I opted for max special attack just for optimal uh, damage output against his fat threats. I really didn't need the bulk so much. Uh, as Mew's natural bulk does allow me to roost up on the Mega Venusaur if I ever need to. So um, that is another one of my potential offensive win conditions. And then the, uh, I, I guess the third offensive win condition, not really, it's kind of offensive, but it's definitely more bulky. It's this Magirna. Okay, Magirna is always a possible win condition on this draft. It just, it has to be. It's, that's the role it fills on my draft. So it's going to be a potential offensive win con, but most importantly, this is meant to be a defensive check to a variety of Pokemon on his team. The Akaberry allows me to be a solid defensive check to the Zoroark, which otherwise is a pretty massive threat 
uh, against my team. It's also something that I really expect him to bring in this matchup just because it is able to outspeed those base 100s that otherwise outspeed his entire team. So I feel like he's kind of forced into bringing Zoroark in this matchup and the uh, Magirna will be able to defensively check that very well. Potentially even set up a shift gear on him, put in some work against his team. Uh, this is going to be walled by the likes of Mega Venusaur and Rotom Heat. But on both of those, I should be able to potentially Volt Switch on a Prediction and get in one of my other offensive threats against those at that time. Um, so Volt Switch is a really nice move to have on the Magirna, but I am running, uh, again, a ton of defensive investment max HP to allow me to take hits from Zygarde, from Buzzwool, uh, from just a lot of his team. Mimikyu is another big one. This can take hit from all three of those easily, Celesteela easily, and just apply a lot of pressure against him in the process. On top of the Volt Switch, Dual Stab is just really solid solid against his team for sure and yeah so that's the Magirna just a potential win condition it does allow me to outpace his fastest Mon after a shift gear which is nice as well and on the off chance that he opts to not bring his Scarfer uh, I'm trying to remember remember if I actually brought enough speed for one of his potential Scarfers I think I actually brought enough speed for maybe Scarf to Buzzwall. I don't remember off the top of my head, so uh, you can probably tell just from looking at my at my speed what it was meant to. Speed Creep, I'm sorry, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but uh, even so, yeah, it's, it's a really good Pokemon, really good defensive Pokemon that doubles as a nice offensive win con, depending on what he decides to uh, sacrifice in the game. If he sacks the Rotom uh, and or the Mega Venusaur, this becomes an absolutely enormous threat against him for sure. So next up is the Mega Aerodactyl. Uh, pretty straightforward set once Again, this is almost identical, I think, to what I brought last week, maybe changing a coverage move or two. So, uh, just taunt Stealth Rock again, just a pretty safe way to get Stealth Rock up in this matchup. Uh, Aerial Ace is really nice to help me revenge the Mega Venusaur, and Taunt helps to prevent the uh, potential setup from a Zygarde or from the Celesteela. And Rock Slide is just nice and spammable against his team. Not a whole lot else to say on this. This does actually outspeed the Choice Scarf Buzzwool, just in case that's the set he opts to bring. I think that's the most likely Buzzwool he would bring against my team, just considering my speed tiers. Uh, so it's nice to have something that can outspeed that. And then finally, we have probably the glue that uh, really keeps this team together, and that is the Incineroar, making his debut this week for the KC Jirachi. He's rocking the Assault Vest this week. Uh, with U-Turn, Flare Blitz, Knock Off, and Fake Out. Fake Out helps me to get the potential Nasty Plot Zoroark into range of my Mega Aerodactyl, as well as just getting it into range of other offensive members of my team. That little bit of chip damage really comes in clutch. And it also kind of allows me to scout for a potential Zoroark as well. Uh, not that Zoroark necessarily wants to stay in on Incineroar, but this could give me a way to potentially scout for the, uh, the Illusion as maybe Zoroark would be disguised as something that could really hurt the rest of my team if I tried to switch. So, uh, Fake Out's nice for that. Flare Blitz, Knock Off, just really good stab options. U-Turn for the momentum. A pretty straightforward set overall. Uh, just a good special sponge against some of his bigger threats against my team. For example, Rotom Heat is really solid against the rest of my team if I don't bring something like an Assault Vest and Center Roar. So, uh, this really helps fill that gap especially in particular. So, that is the team we are bringing for this week. Basically, just trying Trying to win this game with a variety of offensive options. Uh, not really a clear-cut win con necessarily going into this match. It just depends on what he decides to sack off to me throughout the game, and that'll kind of dictate how I try to play out the end game uh, here in this matchup. But it's very important in this match for sure for me to get the Mega Venusaur Weekend. That is crucial, I think, because getting Mega Venusaur Weekend really opens up the door for two of my potential win cons. Really, even three. If Mega Venusaur's Weekend, he has very little to even try to switch into Groudon. So uh, Groudon, Manaphy, Magirna all really get opened up if Mega Venu gets weakened. Uh, which means all three of those could really weaken Mega Venusaur for the others. So uh, I, I think that works out pretty well here on this team, in my opinion. But that is what we are bringing for this week. Make sure to let me know what you think about the team in the comments below. Uh, and with that said, I think we are done here. So I will see you guys tomorrow for the match coming up sometime in the afternoon. Don't know what time quite yet, 
for the game, but make sure to be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for Danza's upload as well. Of course, on this channel, uh, he is playing... I Mm, he might be playing Randy. I don't remember exactly who he's playing for this week, but be on the lookout for that too. Dan's a pretty cool guy. Uh, but anyways, that's all I have to say for this one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all in the battle tomorrow. Peace.